God is always right as the creator who from which everything in all the fabric of reality, everything was derived. He gets to do with it whatever he wants. We also acknowledge that he is also just. He also gets angry. He also has something called wrath. So we, I, th I think a lot of the time you may have come into contact with Christians who give you a watered down gospel, who just says he, he is nothing but, but loving. But there is another side to that where he is also nothing but just completely. Okay, sure. But e even on that version, right, uh, if we're going to say that God is just and he's loving and caring, um, I still don't think that these properties, like if, you know, if these properties have any meaning to us, right, it would be very surprising for a God who has these properties to create a world where, you know, millions of people die horrible deaths from natural causes and diseases, right? Like, right. So, so I still think you have this burden to like explain, like, because it seems like prima, fa uh, prima facie at face value, right? If we have an all loving God who's, who's who also created all the just. world, we wouldn't expect a world where millions of innocent people die from natural uh, causes, right? Well, that's where, if you look further into my system, we don't believe that anybody is innocent. We enter this world under the federal headship of the first Adam who under which we are born under under sin so the biblical term would be that we operate abiding and this is before someone is saved we have the wrath of god abiding over us through our life i mean it, it seems like we're just gonna reach we're very quickly gonna reach like a on the, on this point at least we're gonna reach just a sort of point of intractable intractable disagreement because it feels to me like if your if your justification is like yes god is all loving and it's consistent with uh an all loving god that, that that's not my but that's not my position my position is oh, sure, sure, uh, but all just right well um, god god is always right as the creator who from which everything in all the fabric of reality everything was derived he gets to do with it whatever he wants See, he, uh, if we had to say, uh, if we went to the second point of contact on those data points that we talked about, mm -hmm. talking about wills, me and you, like I said in my opening statement, have something called a creaturely will, right? We're constantly, we, our will, I, we both agreed at the very beginning that there is no such thing as free will for us because why? There is constant stimuli bombarding and influencing our choices 24-7 of our lifespan that, that that's just undeniable no one's going to argue that so there's something always influencing our choices god in his in like from eternity when he was the only the triune god was the only thing in existence that is purely free he is the one with free will sure so i mean i, I guess if if you're going to say that god is just but you just will are willing to you know just bite the bullet and say that it's just to just kill billions of people uh who you know ostensibly uh have n never done anything wrong in their lives just because they were born in sin you know if, like it's well, just the, to give the, it's just to, we've all i think if you look into all of our past we've all done something wrong Right. Okay. Okay. Well, what I mean, about what about what, like what, what what about like a baby who dies who gets like ripped apart by a lion? Yeah. Hold on. Let me jump in here. Uh, okay. Because Maldi, you're saying that we would you would define good and evil based on outcomes, correct? Um, I thought I he mean, didn't believe in evil. I I don't believe in evil, but like what, the, what the... he is calling good and evil, mm -hmm. you would define those based on outcomes. Uh, well, I I, I would say that like my the the argument from evil doesn't commit me to saying that bad outcomes exhaust what counts as evil like there could be other things that are intrinsically evil for all i care all i'm saying is like if evil means everything or, or if evil means anything and isn't just a tautology that just means whatever god happens to do then it seems like uh 
like like millions of of people dying uh unjustifiably experiencing completely needless suffering that doesn't seem to serve any purpose whatsoever um, well, that's the part though is you well, would, you're defining it based on being justifiable right whereas he's saying if it's god's will then it is justifiable well right? okay but but if he's going to take that line then i just take it that when he says god is good and god does good things if I say, okay, well, based on how everyone understands the concept of good, there seems to be things we can see in the world which would suggest that God is not good. But then he's just going to say, okay, well, no, but just the fact that God did it means it's good. Well, then I just take it that good is, it just doesn't mean anything. It just means what God happens to do, right? Well, so good is just I, void of, of yeah, any substance. Real, I, real quick, I, I just have to say, I have to say, Pedro, uh, you have to go in real quick to Twitch and nuke this VOD right now. We've just been talking about God. Yeah, but you... just do it. Do it. Okay. Okay. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. Give me one second. Uh, Mouthy, just hold on for a okay. moment. I'm sorry about this. Twitch. It's an odd intermission, I know. <laughs> no worries, no worries. Create a dashboard. I did. I did. Yep. I saw it. I I, I want to let you know there's people who do it all the time, though. I know. Like, I okay. get it. I, I understand. Video producer. Okay. All right. Those it's people, deleted. Those people, okay. Those people probably don't have the same enemies I do. <laughs> but anyway, go ahead, man. Okay. So if quickly I could rebound and say... Uh, what this may come down to is a significant portion of on who God is and how he operates is Isaiah uh, 55 verse 9. His ways are above my ways. And then I have it actually prepared here for a second. Give me one moment. So as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. So you were talking about people getting torn apart by lions specifically babies right sometimes in this world things happen that are orchestrated by god specifically that until we get into eternity with him and have uh, the opportunity to actually ask him what's going on we won't ever see the grand plan or the ultimate purpose behind it but that is in where your system fails because ultimately that baby getting ripped apart does not matter. It was just a purposeless moment that just occurred. It has no basis on to call it, oh, that was a bad event or that was unfortunate. It just happened. Whereas in our system, we're telling you sometimes God takes people out of this world at particular times to save them from suffering that they would have incur uh, incurred if they had stayed here longer. Like, for example, I know, uh, well, no, I don't want to do a heart jerk or anything like that, but I had a person in my life got taken away from me recently, and I would be on the phone with them all the time, and they were just saying how much uh, they felt like they were being persecuted, right? And they were a believer, and I know them and I love them, but they were taken out of this world at that at a particular time ordained by God, and in my in my eyes... This place is going crazy right now. As you can see, we have people arguing for things like pedophilia. We pretty much are seeing Germany relapse into World War II moments for no reason. I don't know what they're thinking, but this is the ultimate plan of God actually unfolding before your eyes. You're not going to understand everything that's happening, but let, let you know uh, from the get-go that it has an ultimate purpose behind it. Okay, so I detected sort of two points there. The first point is that under atheism, bad things happen, uh, but they're they're pointless, right? Like they, they there's no purpose to them. Yes, we and, would we would ask you to just ground. Why would you call something bad? Like what? Because that requires some kind of objective standard, right? Okay, so I would say no, but. Okay, so so I guess there's there's three points I just want to make really quickly. So the first point is you said the the baby getting ripped apart is pointless, and this counts against atheism. Um, I don't think it really does. Um, it's certainly the case that 
the fact that on an atheist hypothesis, when a baby gets ripped apart by lions, there is no purpose. And that might feel bad to us, right? That that might be like sort of emotionally hard for us to grapple with. But I don't think that the fact that an entailment of atheism is emotionally hard to grapple with actually means that therefore atheism is less likely to be true. If anything, at most, it would just mean that atheism, uh, if true, is less fortunate, right? But that's not actually evidence against it. Um, and it, uh, I would also say that uh, what is evidence, though, so um, what is evidence is when we have a data point that's less expected on one hypothesis than another. So forget about whether or not this data point is easier to deal with emotionally on the hypothesis of atheism and ask the question, is this data point more expected on the hypothesis of atheism? And I would say that it is more expected on the hypothesis of atheism, which counts in favor of atheism being true, because on the atheist hypothesis, the universe is indifferent. The universe does not care what happens to us. And if we die, so what? Uh, it, atheism is a hypothesis of indifference. And so it would make a lot of sense for there to be a lot of fucked up shit happening and uh, sorry, a lot of messed up things happening in the world uh, because, you know, who, nobody cares. There's no creator who's who's ruling over what happens, who wants us to do well. Whereas on the theist hypothesis, there is this God who is supposedly all loving, all just. Um, and given how most people understand these concepts, it's very hard to square the idea that such a God is directing everything that happens with the um, obvious facts that there's a lot of unjustified or uh, seemingly pointless suffering that occurs in the world. Um, I would say just two other points uh, really quickly. The first point is you said, well, if you're an atheist, you have to explain how can something be bad. You have to give an objective standard for something being bad. Um, well, I, I don't think that's actually true. Um, I'm inclined to say that there is no uh, there is no such thing as objective badness. Um, there is no such thing as, as, as objective badness. So that's not really a data point that my hypothesis has to account for. And I don't think that my argument from evil requires that my hypothesis says that there is objective badness. All my argument from evil requires is that your hypothesis says that objective badness exists, right? Like I said, it's just we're saying that on your hypothesis, God has these properties. And so if that were true, uh, not that not that these properties actually do exist, but if it were true that these properties did exist in a substantive sense and God had them, uh, it would be very surprising that we live in the world that we live in. And the final point is just that um, you said that just uh, evil is sort of justified or it's less uh, unsurprising. It's less surprising that we see this on the theist hypothesis because there's always a purpose for evil happening, right? So maybe it sucks that somebody suffered a lot and died, but they would have suffered worse if they didn't die at the time that they died. And so really it's justified. Um, but the problem there is that you're assuming that God was bound to two alternative options. He could either kill you or let you suffer more, right? In which case, yeah, okay, then if he killed you, then it would seem consistent with him being all good because he had these two choices and he picked the better one. But of course, God is not restricted to those two choices. God can do anything. He's all powerful. So he could have picked a third world where you didn't die, but also you wouldn't have suffered more had you not died. He could have picked one where you would have been happy for the rest of your life. Um, so I don't think that appeal really explains away the the issue. Okay. So I'm trying to figure out really quick, because in your statement there, you said there's no such thing as objective E or good, you said? Mm -hmm. Is there anything that is objective? Um, it depends on what you mean by objective. Is there any kind of objective fact-based statement concerning morality that we can make? Yeah, so concerning morality, I think we can make true. So I think um, I would say that I'm some form of moral relativist. So I think that we can make true moral statements, but uh, it doesn't make sense to say that these moral statements are true simpliciter. Rather, the uh, moral statements can only be uh, their, their truth value is dependent with reference to some particular system. 